Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the Softkey Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. Sorry this video is up a little late, but here's what our diggers have for us for week 44. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply head on over to the Patreon page linked in the video description. Now without further ado, let's begin. Starting things off with a team dig today, from Brendan of Retro Swim and Dick DeYoung, we've got DOS Games backslash Adventure backslash Best ZZT. Okay, I think it's safe to assume this is going to have something to do with, yep, ZZT. But, interesting. It doesn't include any of the main ZZT files, but two Best ZZT? Hmm. There's a file ID that does. Let's actually see what's in there. Two new ZZT adventures brought to you by Epic Mega Games? Really? Hmm. Well, let's see what we got here. Keyboard, color. Oh, that actually had a different start up there. Hang on. Best of ZZT, copyright 92. It's a set of two giant game worlds. The individual boards were created by many ZZT enthusiasts across the world. These boards are the winners of the 1991 ZZT Game Design Contest and were chosen from among over a thousand game boards that were entered. Interesting. So it's kind of like a conglomeration of different boards from Epic Ma from ZZT creators. At least that's what I'm getting from this. The Secret of Headhunter Island Isle. Let's actually just play this. Uh, interesting. So yeah, basically from the looks of this, is it's just, just a whole bunch of different ZZT boards compiled together into one cohesive story, but the boards themselves were created by well, ZZT players. That's an interesting way of going about making a ZZT thing. Well, first I have to find a particular area that isn't going to completely, like, kill me or something, because I don't have any ammo, so I can't kill anything. And I'm not finding any ammo. Well, what's this thing? A red bush. And this? Go away. Aren't you supposed to be like a tree? Forest gate is locked. Like, how... where am I supposed to... Oh, there's a village. <laughs> It even says hi on the village there. So yeah, I probably should have come here first. Village guard speaks, no stranger shall enter in until they're proven worthy. Horrible monsters are threatening our trees that supply our food. Free each tree by slaughtering creatures that surround it. Then talk to it. After freeing all the trees, visit the tree by the red bush. Remember, the tree won't talk until you kill the monsters surrounding it. Oh, and you'll need this key. There we go. I was about to say, you expect me to kill this stuff how? <laughs> Very stingy with the ammo. Oh wait, here's some. There we go. Okay, so this is taking a while, because it's a ZZT game, of course it will, so... I'm not gonna go too much more into this one. Um, it basically just looks like a big ZZT world. Um... But there were two of them. So, let's actually load up the second one here. Best of ZZT Part 2. So, probably just more stages and everything. Can I actually edit these? That would be interesting. Um, oh. The edit button isn't present in this version of ZZT. That's interesting. So, this was sort of like a special version of ZZT then that doesn't allow you to edit things. Very interesting. Because, yeah, normally you would push the E key to get into the editor from here, but as you can see from the side of the screen, there is no edit option. And, yeah, pushing the E key itself actually makes the side flicker, which suggests that it is still scanning for the E key, and it's just not reading it. And it also messes up the timing on everything, as you can see. So, yeah, that was Best of ZZT. It's interesting that it actually has its own special version of the ZZT engine. So... I don't know. I'm imagining this is probably somewhere online. In fact, you can probably download the world files themselves from a typical ZZT website, I'm going to guess. And then you could probably edit them from there. But 
Yeah, it's inter- it's interesting that they actually distributed this as its own special thing and everything. Next up, Paul Shear dug up DOS games backslash arcade three backslash XXIV, or maybe that's twenty four. I don't have a clue what this is gonna be. Um, I still don't have a clue. I got a README file, but kind of big, so let's just go into it. XXIV, or judging from the Roman numeral status of it, we're gonna say twenty four. Skill level, press to change skill level. So you got novice, intermediate, expert, H for help. Whoops, that was not the H key. Uh, oh, maybe I don't need help. This looks kind of like a numerical version of columns. Wait, what? Oh, and quit just takes you out of the program, brilliant. Um, H for help. Oh, and we suddenly went into VGA mode, or the um, 640 by 480. Object of 24 is to eliminate horizontal or vertical lines of numbers whose product is 24. So, for instance, 3 and 8 beside each other would be eliminated because they multiply to get 24. However, so would three twos, a 1, and a 3. Interesting. This... So it's basically like a columns game except with a very complicated method of determining if the numbers will disappear or not. Well, let's see if we can do this. So I can drop the pieces, spacebar and stuff. I can cycle where the, the positioning of everything with the up arrow, but I can't actually do much more beyond that. Hmm. This is kind of weird. There's no sound effects either. It's totally silent. Just out of curiosity, if I just randomly drop stuff down, am I gonna... Yeah, the rule set to this seems like it would be too easy to just randomly hit these 24s and everything. Also, something very weird is going on with the graphics. Look, I can't see anything, even though it's supposed to be rendering stuff above there. Yeah, there's something really weird going on with the rendering here. So, I mean, right now, yeah, the tiles aren't rendering above certain positions. And it seems to be related to um, how much stuff you have on the screen. Considering the fact it's affecting the next, and it's also... See how it sort of clipped the six a bit there? Yeah, look at how easy it is to just accidentally make stuff. I'm not, I am not paying attention to what I'm doing. (laughs) I'm really not. And yet, look, I've already got like 39 lines and 670 points. Like, I mean, there's a very fine balance between coming up with an action puzzle mechanics that like make sense in a sense, but are also balanced so that you can't completely screw them over. I guess at the moment, it's like, look at this. There is something really weird going on with the way this game is rendering stuff. But yeah, you need to make sure when you're making the logic for a game like this that it's not too hard to just completely take advantage of it. You want to make sure that players have to put in some effort. Like, as I said, I am paying no attention to where I'm dropping everything. And yet I'm still managing to get points and lines and everything. So... In that sense, the game isn't too well balanced. Well, I finally found a way to end the game. And then... High score. And it takes you back to the title screen. So that was 24. That was... Not that great. It needed some more work to make it more interesting, for sure. And to finish things off today, Matan Hirschberg dug up DOS games backslash adventure backslash Insana 1. I'm gonna get something called Insanity. Yep. With a high score table from the looks of it, so probably some kind of arcade bit type game. Insanity is released on Shareware to let you try it out. If you enjoy it, then register, send us UK £10 or US $20, and we'll send you the latest version with save and load game facilities and no time limit. Okay. So, 
Uh, might be going too fast. Let me check the cycles here. Okay, I got the cycles turned down, but I got a feeling this is still playing weird. You are not going to get much help with playing this crazy game. Okay. Oh, and apparently I have a time limit looking at the bottom there. Oh, that's interesting. It automatically moves you across, um... Oh, and I've got a gun. I don't have any shots for it, though. Oh, I found an extra life. And I clearly don't want to touch those things. Ow. I'm already dead? Well, that didn't last long. <laughs> Okay, so basically we're seeing power-ups and stuff along here. The movement's kind of weird. If you try to move in a direction you can't move, it automatically moves you in the last direction you moved in, if possible, in a sense. So it is, in a sense, it actually has like automatic movement and running along, which is kind of neat, actually. So in a sense, it kind of makes it easier to try and move, move through this maze, in a sense, because it's automatically helping you move along. Otherwise, it kind of feels like ZZT so far, but just as the 40-column text mode instead of the 80-column. Whoops! And so there's the danger of holding the keys down, is that you'll accidentally fly into something that you don't want to pick up, because it kills you. A question mark. Here we are, quite happily, lost inside insanity. It's amazing you must find your way around and then outside. Solve the riddles, find the clues, move around with arrow keys. With quick reactions, healthy mind, it's amazing what you'll find. Pick up only what you need. There's punishment for too much greed. And don't give up till you agree it's worth while playing insanity. Okay. So that doesn't help me in the slightest. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to call this now. Um... It's an interesting game. It's basic. It's definitely inspired by ZZT or games like that. Although it is using the 40 columns mode, and seems to be a lot simpler in many regards. But yeah, I, I get, I can see the appeal of something like this. So for any of you who have any interest in like ZZT type games, but not but want to see something like more independent, like not using ZZT itself, this would probably be something worth checking out in that case.